Welcome back Arcadians and we're back with another game room tour. It's been a while but this one's going to be worth the wait because I am telling you this is a game room on the scales of like I have never seen before. Not just the size of the game room but the actual machines that he's got running in there. It's incredible. I've got a lot of big stuff but not because it's necessarily because it's big. I didn't go out specifically looking for a Kaicraft. It sort of found me. <laughs> and I'm back eating what I shouldn't really be eating, <laughs> sausage rolls and cakes, just before I go on one of the most stomach-wrenching machines I've ever been on in my life. Here goes nothing. Arcadians, we have seen many collections over the years, but what you're about to see in this video is something else. This is a collector I've been after for years. It is Craig Walker, AKA or Dying, as he's known on UK VAC forum. Very elusive character, quite shy in front of the camera, um, but the guy is incredible. He really is. He comes at all angles of the hobby from collecting, he loves playing the games, but also more impressively, is that he creates and makes these cabinets, reproduction cabinets, bespoke cabinets, scratch builds on an industrial scale. So not only are you gonna see an amazing collection today, but also you are gonna see uh, a real craftsman at work. So I took a two and a half hour drive up to Nottinghamshire. It was a good day, it was a good solid drive, but it does get boring. So I had to stop off the obligatory Sausage roll and cream cake. <laughs> and this beautiful Victoria sponge. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I don't know if I can eat all of that though. Whoa. Still, I won't be worrying about food when I get there. Will I? <laughs> and I'm kind of regretting that now. Um, I really am. Got an amazing collection already. We haven't even got inside and he's got a <laughs> Sega hologram. Like how often do you see one of these? This is an extremely rare cabinet. Unbelievably rare. I can hear the sounds of Outrun 2. Oh my God, look at this guys. This is incredible. Look, right down the end. The R360, that is unbelievable. Oh my God, he's warmed them all up for us. Look at this. Craig! <laughs> Where is he? Probably working away somewhere. Oh my God, he's got Buck Rogers. I haven't seen one of these since back in the day. Look at that. Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom. Wow, that is so cool. Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom, also known in Japan as Zoom 909. It's kind of like a pseudo 3D rail shooter. It was released into the arcades by Sega in 1982. And you control like a spaceship in a third person perspective. I think this game was really cool when it came out and it's so nice to see it working in, in Craig's collection. This is just the start of Craig's collection and already we've got an Atari Super Sprint. God, this brings back so many memories from back in the day. So much fun playing this with my mates. Atari released that in 1986 and it still holds up today. He's got a Sega Frogger and a Sega Carnival. Now this Sega Carnival arcade machine is absolutely stunning. The artwork is just exquisite. It really is beautiful. I've got a lot of fond memories playing Carnival at a travelling fair that used to come to Hampton Court. Such a fun game. It's a fixed shooter and it was developed by Gremlin but released and distributed by Sega in the arcades in 1980. It was also one of the first games to feature a bonus round. 
And then we have a chop lifter, which I have never seen before. It was released by Sega in 1985 into the arcades, but it's one of the few games that first appeared on the home system and was then ported in the arcades later on. So it must have been extremely popular back in the day, but um, this is my first time playing it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now Craig is here, but he's got his head in the cab at the moment, so he's letting me have full access, bless him. And just look at this lineup. I know me running Outrun 2, a deluxe Space Harrier, a deluxe Outrun, and a deluxe Afterburner. Just incredible, it really is. This point in the game room tour, guys, I really didn't know where to look or what to play. It was just so many cool games. And to be honest with you, not all of them were working, but bless his heart, Craig was trying his best to get them going as I was filming. You like working on a lot of your cabinets, don't you, Craig? You love the tinkering more than the playing. Yeah, I wish you'd stay working for longer though. <laughs> well, you, you would go and buy some of the biggest cabinets with the most moving parts in. <laughs> yeah, it's not normally a bit what's the problem though. <laughs> Oh, we'll come back to Craig later in the video, but look at this lineup here. Unfortunately, they won't work him, but he has a very rare Sega Gremlin cab called Space Fury, released in 1981. It was their second game to use synthesized speech, and it's really cool because in between stages, you've got this kind of like alien that sort of taunts you. Such a cool game to see, just unfortunately, it wasn't working. And here we have one of my favourites. It is Atari's Black Widow from 1982. The Black Widow was really offered as a conversion kit for Gravatar, which wasn't really that successful. So many factory-built Black Widow machines were produced using unsold Gravatar cabinets with Black Widow side art applied over the top of the Gravatar side art. This is a super cool game. Would love to have this for the museum or even for my own collection. It is so cool. And then we have a Donkey Kong and two Atari System 2 cabinets, Championship Sprint and Paperboy, one of my favorites. Um, the only difference between System 1 and System 2 is a monitor, really. They use mid-res monitors in the System 2, but the hardware is pretty much the same. Love Paperboy, one of my favorite games. But again, this one was being worked on when I arrived. So I hope Craig gets that going. And then we've got a Enduro Racer. Fond memories playing this back in the day on my Sinclair Spectrum. Loved Enduro Racer. What you see here is the cream of Atari, in my opinion. These are four of the best games that Atari ever released. Major Havoc, iRobot, Firefox, and Return of the Jedi. Firefox was a lazy disc game. It wasn't very successful because the hardware wasn't very reliable. Uses the same yoke as Return of the Jedi and Star Wars. Major Havoc uses kind of like a spinner, which is really cool. And iRobot, my favorite in the lineup, uses a joystick two buttons. They're all built in very similar cabinets um, and they are just a sight to see, they really are. iRobot though, for me, is the game because this is the one I used to play back in the day in the arcades in Twickenham iRobot was released by Atari in 1984 and designed by Dave Toyer of Missile Command and Tempest fame. The basic object of the game involves you, the robot, going through 126 levels, turning the red squares to blue and then to destroy the Big Brother shield and eye. So much nicer playing it on an original cabinet. You've got to remember when this came out, <clears throat> People didn't quite get it, didn't quite understand what you're supposed to do. But because it was in my local arcade, I was down there all the time playing this game, kind of worked out what, how the game mechanics worked and just really enjoyed, got right into the game, thoroughly enjoyed it. Ah, hit by the eye again. Game over. Let the shield be deactivated when we have confirmation of your code transmission. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. Go for help. I'm Steven. Wait for me. 
Oh yeah, this is cool. And now you see a lot of the games here are not working like the Daytona USA's are not working and some of the big deluxe games but I'm still in awe by it all but this is one guy <laughs> trying to keep all these going. Get ready, here we go guys. Oh yeah, loving this. <laughs> It's got better music than uh, Initial D. Oh yeah. Talk about immersive. Oh. Woo! This is so cool guys, it really is. This is an amazing experience. Full hydraulic, full motion outrun is just something else, it really is, it's unbelievable. And the game we've all been waiting for, Sega's R360. You've got some amazing machines in here, you've got the Sega R360. How the hell did you come across that? Believe it or not, eBay. Ebay. Yeah. And how did you get it here? Was it all in one piece? Uh, well, it's been moved twice. Well, I've moved it twice. But no, that's had to be moved in two pieces because everywhere I've ever had it, it's never been able to fit in the building in one piece. There were a lot of things to do when I first got it because it had been like all video games, I think, well, like all amusement equipment, it had been, when things go wrong, they just get patched up. Just, just get it back on as soon as you can. Yeah. Uh, so there were a lot of things that needed to be done. It, quite a lot went wrong on it when I first got it. I mean, it didn't work when I first got it, but uh, it's just parts on this. Mm -hmm. They're non-existent. And do you enjoy playing it? Sort of. I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of things that spin round. But I used to one go. Sometimes, def, definitely, if I did two, and I would feel absolutely shocking. Yeah. For for a full day, but now I'm all right. Yeah. I can I can play on it and I feel fine. Yeah. I can do two goes on it and I'll, and I'm still be all right. But I've just got sort of used to it. Yeah. So this is the part of the gaming tour you've probably all been waiting for. Uh, it is Sega's R360, an incredible machine that people either have fond memories of playing back in the day or terrible memories of themselves being disorientated and throwing up as soon as they got out. I've heard all of the stories. I'd love to hear your stories if you have any of playing this game. But guys, this is my first experience, what you're about to see here. Whoa. <laughs> Look at this. This is unbelievable. I have never been in one of these in my life. This is so cool. Here goes nothing. Oh my God. Oh. It's quite tight here. <laughs> Right. You have to put a seatbelt on or anything. <laughs> have you got anything else in your pocket? Keys. Oh, 
You're scaring me now. <laughs> Am I gonna throw up? <laughs> What's that button? If you, if you feel sick. Oh, Alright, I'm trying. It will stop you upside down or wherever you are. Will it? Yeah. How long does it last for? Two minutes. Two. One. Two. Oh my god! Oh my god! Woo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, the sausage rolls are coming at me. Oh my god. This is. Oh my oh. god. I'm trying to stay upright and not go upside down because it's horrendous. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is horrendous. Oh my god, I'm still going. Oh crash. Oh my god. 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 Oh, I should never, never had that cake. Do feel sick. <laughs> oh my god, that's mental. Well, <laughs> what can I say? It was an experience. Um, I'm so glad I got to play it because it is just one of those machines a lot of people talk about and have memories of, whether they were fond or not, I don't know, but yeah, I did feel really green, I did feel really disorientated, but you know, at the end of the day, it was fun. I reckon if I had a couple more goes on it, I probably could have got used to it, but I'm so glad that I got to play it, and thank you so much, Craig, uh, for letting me have a go, but not only that, keeping it going, because that must take a hell of a lot of work. But that's not the only machine he's got that's um, on that scale. He's got another one to show us as well. Have a look at this. Another one here, which is a Sega Cycraft Simuline. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't go out specifically looking for a Crycraft. It sort of found me. The Crycraft VR Simulator came out in two, uh, 2003 and ran on Naomi 2 hardware. It supported games like Outrun 2, Sega Rally, Crazy Taxi, and my favourite, F-Zero AX. All of these games would have been an amazing experience in this machine. Funnily enough, I already had one when this came up. Uh, but it were in really, really, it come in for me to have a look at repairing it, but it were in diabolical condition. I really like Major Havoc, but as an all-time favourite game would probably be Outrun. I've, I must have had that 20 years. In fact, I bought that off, off Archer, right. Archer McLean, a hell of a long time ago. Is there any other games you're looking for? I always wanted a Galaxy Force Super Deluxe. I've got a lot of big stuff, but not because it's necessarily because it's big. I mean, a lot of big stuff is because it's Sega, and I think they were quite good at doing. Oh, they were. I think that's how they survived in the arcades, really, because you know people had moved on to console games, and for them to create or, or attract people back into the arcade had to be humongous things like this. Yeah. Turn it all off. Oh, what about the hologram? Does that work? Yeah. Can you try that on? Yeah. Seven, it's actually working, look. Seven look segment this. display. First adventure, select learn. Oh my god, look at that. Yeah. 
Wow. Okay, these are clean. Mm. Now this is a game I was really excited about playing, so I've seen pictures of this and always wondered how it worked. It's Time Traveller and it's a laser disc interactive movie game. It was actually designed by the Dragon's Lair creator Rick Dyer and released in 1991 by Sega. Or must be Strange game. <laughs> it's a really cool effect and I would imagine back in the day this would be quite impressive because I think they actually marketed this game as the world's first 3D holographic video game. And all it is inside is a CRT with a concave sort of mirror used to reflect the image and what you see. Got to be quick. Sega. Craig is now going to show us around his workshop. Now prepare to be amazed because not only does he make arcade machines, he designs them as well. And the kit that he's got is incredible. Okay, wow. This is some workshop crew. You've got all the gear here. <laughs> so is this is where you're making, you make a lot of cabinets, don't you? You're doing a Star Wars cabinet. You've done a quantum cabinet. Yeah. And you're now working on an outrun, is that right? Yeah, that's the, that's the next one. The next one. Yeah. You made quite a few of these and just sold them to collectors, right? Uh, yeah, only, a, I think they were about four or five. Not a, not a massive amount. Yeah, it's quite a rare cab, isn't it, on yeah. its own? Yeah, I only did that one really because I wanted one. Yeah, and these are just bespoke cabinets made to order for mainly trade, barcades and people like that, and, yeah. and collectors? Uh, mainly doing runs of them. Yeah. Because it's just the amount of work to do exact replicas, the amount of work to do one-offs, it's just... It's too much. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll do a run of what, a dozen? Yeah, because it's... What we're doing is like starting from scratch because I've yet to see a set of plans what's remotely correct. Yeah. Is this a metal bender? Yeah, press break. A press break? Yeah. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Wow, it's pretty impressive. So you can make these control panels, is that what you've been working on? Yeah, a key, brackets. Yeah. For, well, look like that's there. We normally, uh, when we make something, we either keep an original one, as well yeah. as having all CAD programs. Look like that's a, that's obviously a, that you've seen there, there's a stainless track and field one. Yeah. And then that's a, uh, painted one. Right, so this is where you some, spray. We've got some uh, seconds. For that one. Yeah. That's a, yeah. that's a reject. This is great to see a dedicated spray room. I would absolutely love this for some of my work at the museum. And then we've got, what is this over here, Craig? Uh, that's a fibre laser for cutting out uh, all the metal work. Right. Serious bit of kit. So, well, all, like everything you just see in control panels, this is the scrap pile. So, any me any metal work that yeah. we do is cut out on this. And you can get that done instantly and really quickly, can't you, with these yeah. old machines? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the CNC machine for cutting out all the woodwork. Right, blimey. Yeah, I mean, you could do this on an industrial scale, couldn't you? <laughs> that has a tool changer in, so basically it does everything. Cuts, drills. Mm. Basically, you've got all your tools in there. So you program, program it up and it uh, this pops up and it'll pick a different tool up, like a different size drill, different size cutter, or some, depending on what you're doing, a chamfered cut. Nice. What, what is it? <laughs> what is this? 
Looks like a heavyweight champ, if I remember right. He's got a heavyweight champ. Yeah, as a marquee on which goes on top with a bell on. Right. Boxing game. Boxing game. Wow. It's not as old as it looks. No. It's, I think it's System 16. Right. I thought it was a, I don't know what I was thinking, but it's got like the stars and stripes. I thought maybe it was Evil Knievel. No. Uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, right, cool. Ding, ding. <laughs> Heavyweight champ. Look at that. Huh. Never seen it before. That's a... I bet it's quite a tiring game. Japanese cabinet. There's another game I've never heard of. Heavyweight champ, the original arcade game, was released in 1976. The game featured black and white graphics and it has since been identified as the first video game to feature hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Craig's game, however, is super cool. It was released by Sega in 1987 and basically it's the remake of the 1976 game. It changed the viewpoint up, so a little bit more like Punch-Out and this looks so good. This is the sort of game I'd absolutely love because I used to own Punch-Out, love boxing games, could definitely get into this. Now this is another part of Craig's workshop. This is where all the magic happens. This is where all the repairs of all the PCBs and monitors. He's doing a real service for the community here. So this, this is a cabinet you've built yourself? Yes. That is a exact copy of a Star Wars it, you've done an amazing job of it, Craig. Honestly, it looks identical, and your workmanship is absolutely immaculate. Look at that. Look at the cuts in that cabinet. How long did it take you to build something like this? I'll tell you when we start putting them together. Okay. <laughs> An upright, like a track and field, we can do a couple in a day, but this is a particularly tricky thing to put together. Whatever, there's a lot of work in this, and I can't well, imagine there's many people building something like this well, to that exact. Every part on this will fit on an original, and every, and, well, this is a bit of a funny one because it's got parts on it off an original because it were an original what were smashed to bits in transit. So the control panel, bezel, marquee, uh, glass, uh, the roof, but that's getting replaced because for some reason it's got two different colours in it. So one of them's been replaced at some point. Uh, but what I'm getting at is everything from an original will fit on this and if you want to buy a part of me, that will fit onto an original. You can buy one of these and put a 25 inch amplifone in it and all the original bits. If you look in the back of this, this has been set up to have a 25 inch amplifone in it mm -hmm. and it's even got the cards in mm -hmm. with the high voltage and the deflection board goes because mm -hmm. uh, this is this is going back to as it original was from the factory the cabinet what came into me didn't even have that in it it had been swapped out to a 19 inch mm. it weren't uh, amplifying anymore but mm. the, and the owner wants it putting back to as was so this is another one you're working on track and field so this is a complete scratch build track and field isn't it it is yeah and what have you put in it? You've put um, a little monitor in there. It is, this is going, this is uh, for a trade customer. So uh, it's, I mean, this, the build of the cabinet is exactly the same as an original. It's got, you could put the brackets in, uh, and I, I, I've made the brackets and put a CRT in and the original boards in. It's exactly the same, but trade customers are not, I don't really want to put original boards in and... They just want it reliable. So I, I try and make it look from the outside as close as I can and mm. like put scan lines into it. It looks more authentic. All the, all the bits metal work will all 
we're all going to original track and field. Mm. Looking around Craig's workshop, I'm just super impressed by his whole setup. I mean, here's a guy that works extremely hard, not only creating, replicating his machines, but he fixes them as well. It's just unbelievable. It'd be slightly horrendous because it's a underwound yoke. So you can test all your vector PCBs out on this rig here, is that what you've done? Yeah, yeah. If, I'm, if I'm making your looms up. So yeah. far, we've got a grand total of Star Wars. Right, okay. <laughs> in, a great, in a jammer loom for, <laughs> yeah. for the other one. It's brilliant, mate. But yeah, it's supposed to do, it, it does analog yeah. and digital. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to have a display in there, but it's currently sat in bottom. So you can switch it between analog and digital. So one mode that'll just do left, right, up, down. Then the other mode it'll work like a steering wheel or a. Brilliant. It's brilliant, mate. Thank you so much for showing me everything, Craig. It's been absolutely great. A great day. Finally enjoyed it. You've got an amazing collection, and you're doing a service here for all of us. I'm not sure about that. Well, you are. <laughs>Guys, we come to the end of the game room tour. Unfortunately, there is never enough time to film such a big collection like that. There was just so many games in there um, that I didn't cover. And obviously a lot of them weren't working. So hopefully we can go back for a part two next year when Craig's got all of the games working because he's got some really rare games that I haven't played before, which I would absolutely love to. Um, but we've got to say a huge thank you to Craig for letting us in there, the cameras in there, and filming his collection, because it takes quite a lot to organise. You know, I was in there for four hours. <laughs> so thank you, Craig, so much for letting us in there. Unbelievable collection. You're doing the whole community a service by doing what you're doing. It is incredible. It really is. But that's it, guys, unfortunately. And um, as I say, we'll hopefully return with a part two next year. Until then, take care. I'll see you on the next one.